morning and thanks for joining in. Today we are going to talk about a condition called the hydrocele. Hydrocele by definition is collection of fluid inside a cavity in our body. But in this case, when most doctors refer to a word hydrocele, they usually refer to a fluid collection around the testicle because that is the commonest place where hydroceles happen. To understand how hydrocele of the testicle happens, I have drawn these two diagrams. Let me try and explain what I have tried showing over here. So this is an abdomen of a man. That is our navel or the belly button or the umbilicus. Testicle, when the fetus is growing in the mother's tummy, is formed inside the abdomen. And those are the two testicles I've drawn, the right testicle and the left testicle. As most of you know, the inside of our tummy, which surrounds every organ in our body, whether it is the liver, the kidneys, the spleen, the intestine, etc., etc., is surrounded by a very thin membrane. That thin membrane looks like cling film. And that membrane which I have drawn in red, which is called the peritoneum, surrounds all the structures in our tummy, including the testicle. As the fetus grows in the mother's tummy during pregnancy, the testicle starts coming down as the fetus grows bigger and bigger. In the mother's uterus, the testicle keeps coming down and down until at birth is sitting in the groin and it comes out from the tummy through a structure called inguinal canal. Now, if you are unsure about the anatomy or what I'm talking about, please do watch my video on inguinal hernias, the link of which I have shown down at the bottom. At birth, the testicle is sitting in the groin with the lining of the tummy or the peritoneum around it. And at birth, it drops into the scrotum. So the left side testicle will go down, go through the inguinal canal and go into the left side of the scrotum and the right side similarly into the right side of the scrotum. Now the, when the testicle comes down, it pulls this lining, which is the peritoneum, brings it down into the scrotum with it. Now to explain this a bit easier, I've drawn this bigger diagram of the testicle. So on the outside, the black line is the line of our scrotum. I am showing only one side testicle, which is the left testicle. This big structure in here, which I have drawn in blue, is the left testicle. Next to it is a tube which comes out of the testicle called the epididymis. And every man can feel that if they feel the testicle, the tube on top of the testicle. This is the cord of the testicle, which goes into the tummy up. So the testicle is here. The cord will be going up into the tummy because as the testicle comes down, it brings all its structures with it. So it will bring the artery to the testicle, which supplies blood to the testicle. It will bring the vein to the testicle, which takes the blood back into the tummy from the testicle. And it will also bring the duct from the testicle which takes the sperm from the testicle and takes it to the genitals. So that is that blue structure with the lines in it I have drawn is the cord which is going into the tummy and as you can see just outside the cord I have drawn this red all around the testicle which wraps the testicle around. Now this is called the tunica vaginalis or it is the peritoneum which surrounds our testicle, which testicle brings down with it as it comes down from the abdomen into the scrotum. At birth or soon after birth, the tunica vaginalis, which is going connected to the abdomen, will close along here somewhere. The function of the peritoneum in our tummy is to produce a very thin layer of fluid which reduces the friction between different organs. Say, for example, the intestine, they have to move around in the tummy 
because they are quite mobile in the tummy. Because of this fluid, they can move around without any friction. And the same thing is done by this red structure, which is the peritoneum coming around with the testicle called the tunica vaginalis. And it also produces fluid, which I have drawn in these red little lines around the testicle. So it also produces very tiny amount of fluid around the testicle. So it can move around easily. At birth, this connection with the tummy of the peritoneum cuts off and closes. When this connection closes, the fluid that is around the testicle gets absorbed. However, sometime despite this being closed off, the fluid continues to collect around the testicle in the tunica vaginalis. And I will explain in a minute why that happens. Sometimes what happens that the connection between the tunica vaginalis around the testicle and the peritoneum going into the tummy does not close and stays open. And this connection, open connection, which is called open hydrocele, is quite common in babies and children. And that is associated with a hernia. So hydrocele can happen either when it's totally closed hydrocele or it can be an open hydrocele going into the tummy. The open hydrocele, which is connecting to the tummy, happens usually in children and is associated with a hernia because this opening brings a bit of bowel with it, sometimes a bit of lining of the tummy, the omentum with it, and that is associated with a hernia. If this closes the tunica vaginalis and there is no hernia, then if the fluid collects around the testicle, that is called a closed hydrocele. Closed hydrocele happens in adults, but sometimes also in children. Adults do not get open hydroceles. So what causes the hydrocele? There are many reasons for developing a hydrocele. However, these can be summarized under three headings. If the tunica vaginalis around the testicle produces too much fluid, and I will explain what those conditions are in a minute. If a normal amount of fluid is produced from the tunica vaginalis, however, it cannot be absorbed completely. So the fluid collects, producing too much and not taking back too much. And the third reason, which we have already discussed, there is a connection between the tunica vaginalis around the testicle and the peritoneum inside the abdomen because the connection has not closed. And this is common in children and is associated with a hernia. Now let's discuss the different causes of these two conditions. The first reason was excessive production of fluid. What causes this? In many cases, the cause remains unknown and the tunica vaginalis around the testicle just produces excessive fluid, more that can be absorbed so it collects around the testicle forming a hydrocele. Infection of the testicle or infection of the tube to the testicle, which is the epididymis, which is orchitis or epididymitis, can also cause excessive production of fluid and a hydrocele. Trauma to the scrotum, causing injury to the testicle, making it bleed, can cause fluid around the testicle. Tumors of the testicles can also produce excessive amount of fluid around the testicle. The fluid that is collected in these conditions is quite clear fluid, like straw colored, like the color of very light urine. Whereas the fluid collected after an injury or with the trauma is usually blood stained. The second reason of developing a hydrocele that we discussed earlier was reduced absorption of the fluid. Again, in many of these, usually adults, the cause remains unclear. The tunica vaginalis becomes quite thick, is not able to absorb the fluid properly. In certain parts of the world, the lymphatic vessels, which usually take the fluid back from different parts of our body, back towards the heart, they are also present in the scrotum and in the testicle, and they get damaged. 
when these infections are quite common or perhaps more common in certain parts of the world as compared to others like in Africa and a condition called elephantiasis. These infections are caused by parasites and these parasites usually are spread by a bite of a mosquito. What are the symptoms of the hydrocele? Obviously it presents with swelling of the scrotum as they are usually on one side or the other so swelling will be on that side only. They usually don't complain of too much pain, usually feel discomfort in there because of the tightness of swelling and bigger the swelling more the discomfort and they feel like there is heaviness in the scrotum because of the size of the swelling. Very occasionally there can be a bit of pain especially if the hydrocele is because of trauma. Somebody has got injury on the scrotum which causes bleeding in the scrotum which causes the hydrocele and that can be painful. How is the diagnosis made for a hydrocele? It depends whether the patient is a child or an adult. So in children, simple clinical examination should make the diagnosis. If one can feel above the swelling in the scrotum with a pinch of their finger, so if they pinch the top of the scrotum with their finger, if they can get above the swelling and close the fingers together, then it is usually a hydrocele. If you can't bring your fingers together, then obviously there is something coming from above, which is the hernia. So that is the difference between a hydrocele and a hernia. Also a test called transillumination in which a torch is shown from behind the scrotum. In a case of hydrocele, you can see the light coming through. In the case of a hernia, you can't usually see the light coming through. In older people and adults, it is very important to get an ultrasound scan because sometimes hydrocele, as I explained before, could be because of a tumor in the testicle. In that case, the tumor will also require treatment. What are the complications of a hydrocele? You can get bleeding inside the fluid in the hydrocele or hydrocele could be because of trauma or because of tumor in which there is blood in the hydrocele. Sometimes if somebody tries to drain the fluid with a syringe and a needle, then it can get infection in there. Hydrocele can get infected even without not attempting to drain the hydrocele. Because the pressure of the fluid in the hydrocele is quite tight, quite big, the testicle might slowly lose its blood supply because of the pressure and can become very atrophic, which means become very small and shrunken and loses its function. So it can't produce any sperm and can't produce any male hormones. Treatment of a hydrocele depends on the age of the patient. In a newborn and infants, most of the hydroceles will disappear on their own. You don't require any treatment. However, if they last over the age of one, then there is usually a hernia associated with the hydrocele. In that case, the child will require repair of the hernia and that will take care of the hydrocele as well. In the case of adults, if the hydrocele is very small, and not causing any symptoms and if the underlying testicle on a scan is normal then all that is necessary is to give supporting underwears and that should not need any operation. Larger hydroceles or hydroceles with underlying problem with the testicle whether it might be repeated infection of the testicle or tumor of the testicle or severe trauma to the testicle or just a primary hydroceal with nothing wrong with the testicle but very large hydroceal which is causing discomfort, then those will require surgical removal of the hydrocele. And if the testicle is abnormal, then that might also need to be removed. I hope you found this video informative. And if you did, then please remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you very soon. Until next time, take care.